Praise the Lord. We thank God for everything he has done, everything we've heard, everything we've received, everything we're going to work on, everything God has done for you, for me, for us, for the church in Ghana, for the church worldwide. And I pray everything God has given and we have received and we possess will do good in every life, every ministry, every business and profession, in every country and in all the nations of the world, in Jesus' name. As we come to the last session, I want to listen to the simple but powerful words of Jesus Christ. Ask, seek, knock. Ask, seek, knock. And the door of breakthrough will be open for everyone this day, this morning, here, everywhere, in Jesus' name. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, your Father, we thank you for your children, sons and daughters, ministers and servants of God. Lord, we pray that today everything we need, even if we don't know we need those things, everything we need, you impart to every life, even today in Jesus' name. Be glorified in every life, lifted up with every ministry, and reign supreme without a rival in your church, in Jesus' name. Confirm your blessings upon your church and the minister, the workers, the professionals, your children. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Another amen. Let the amen go from Accra, Ghana, to the rest of the world. God bless you. I can see them. We're coming to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 24. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 24. And when they had that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all there is therein. There's a lot there, but go to verse 31. In verse 31, it says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaking when they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they speak the word of God with boldness, verse 33. In verse 33, it says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. The first line, great power. And the last line, great grace and they gave witness they evangelized they preached the gospel they publicized and promoted the name of christ and they did that with great power and great grace and they kept on evangelizing and harvesting until they occupied the whole land you feel jerusalem with your doctrine the doctrine of jesus as savior and the people that have turned the men that have turned the world upside down 
because and they turn their religion upside down tradition upside down and the idolatry upside down and they lifted up jesus and exalted jesus the men the women that have turned the world upside down are come here us and we are going to all the world and we're going to shake everything shakeable even the things that are not shakeable and they have remained there but they are not profiting the church they are not profiting the land they are not profiting the nations we're going to shake all those unshakeable and shakeable things in jesus name we're looking at the three things in the message the message today is unlimited grace and unfailing power for unstoppable unstoppable harvesting the harvesting the evangelism that they go into the world and bringing men and women out of the world into the church of the living god that harvesting is unstoppable and with what grace and with what power do we do that unlimited grace and unfailing power for unstop unstoppable harvesting uh, three things we're looking at number one number one is asking number two is seeking number three is knocking number one is asking to receive his grace all sufficient grace number two we are talking about seeking to recover his great all strengthening power number three is knocking to regain his great all secured promises grace all sufficient power all strengthening and promises all secured we ask we seek we knock have you noticed the beginning of ask a and the beginning of the word seek s and the beginning of the word knock k and everything comes to a s k tell me ask so he tells us if you can ask if you can pray if you can plead with the throne of heaven and simply ask ask seek and knock all doors are open before you we're looking at number one now number one is ask to receive his great all sufficient grace in matthew chapter 7 we're looking at verse 7 ask and it shall be given unto you seek and ye shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you verse 8 for everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened it's talking about individual asking individual seeking individual knocking him that knocketh the door shall be opened and you are the one that will knock you are the one that will seek you are the one that will ask and the door is wide open for you everything you need for ministry everything you need for life everything you need for your profession the door is open unto you in verse 9 it says in verse 9 of what man is there of you whom if his son ask bread will he give him a stone the answer is obvious he will not give him a stone number verse 10 it says in verse 10 or oh, if he ask a fish will he give him a scorpion the answer is obvious no he will not he'll give the fish that the son the daughter is asking then in verse 11 it says if he then being evil evil by nature if he being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more how much more readily how much more uh, simply how much more in answering our prayer 
readily and simply and fully how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him he's telling us asking to receive his great or sufficient grace three things we're looking at here look at number one there number one is asking and abiding in his sonship grace there is grace and his sonship grace and we're asked we receive and we abide in that sonship grace. Number two is accessing and accepting serving grace. There is grace to be a son. There is grace to be a servant of God. Number three, abounding and advancing through sufficient grace. Sonship faith, serving faith, and sufficient grace grace look at number one there number one asking and abiding in sonship grace john chapter one verse 12 in john chapter one verse 12 and but as many as received him to them he gave power privilege right to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name in verse 14 verse 14 tells us it says and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth is so full of grace that even though many have come there is still room for the next person and he gives the grace is the grace of God that then turns us around and will become the sons of God the daughters of God in um, second Corinthians chapter um, six we're reading from verse 17 how we come and become the sons and the daughters of God by his grace it's done everything he ought to do and Christ paid the price the whole price do I have anything to do let the father say what we have to do so that we become the sons and the daughters of God second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17 it says wherefore come out from among them and be separate says the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I that's God talking and I that's the heavenly father and I that the giver of all grace and I the one that will transform us from a sinner to a son to a daughter and I will receive you and then in verse 18 it says and I will be a father unto you come out of sin come out of darkness come out of evil come out of your former lifestyle come out of occultism come out from under the control of satan and as you come out and then you see for the grace of god to remain to abide in the family in his kingdom and to remain under his control and remises i will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters says the lord almighty somebody shout amen, amen. Titus chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 11 for the grace of god that bringeth salvation the grace of God that bringeth not liberty to continue in sin. The grace of God does not bring license to keep on sinning. The grace of God does not bring permission to keep on sinning. I love you so much whether your head is down, your feet are up. I love you so much whether you frustrate the grace of God or no. No, it, it says the grace of God and that grace of God bringeth salvation vision it has appeared unto all men in verse 12 teaching us that 
denying of godliness and worldly laws we deny when the grace of god comes the grace of god that makes us sons of god daughters of god that grace teaches us that when temptation comes now when lost is knocking at the door when evil is knocking at the door we deny i don't know ungodliness anymore we deny them we do not know what the laws anymore now we should live soberly righteously godly in this present world somebody said you know this uh, kind of sin iniquity and evil okay i know i'll be free when i get to heaven no if you are not free before you get to heaven you'll not be there because that grace of god now makes us to live righteously soberly in this present world verse 13 verse 13 says looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great god and our savior jesus christ in verse 14 it says who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity that's what the grace of god does it comes into our lives and redeems us and sets us free from all iniquity if we have not been set free from all iniquity from the damning sin of humanity we need to go back to the cross again and say lord i need your grace your enabling grace i need your grace your sufficient grace so that what you did on the cross of calvary will avail for me and purify purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good word in philippians chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 15 philippians chapter 2 verse 15 that she may be blameless and harmless sons the sons of god if we're going to be blameless we, we need to at least understand it's a possibility and it's a provision for you and for me and for all the sons and the daughters of god it says that ye may be blameless and harmless sons of god without rebuke without rebuke without the rebuke of heaven without the rebuke of the father without the rebuke of jesus saying i have some words against you without the rebuke of our senior pastor the apostle the bishop without the book because we allow the grace of god to work in our lives without a rival and without any opposition it says that that grace of god so works in us that we're blameless and harmless the son of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world then in verse 16 it says we are holding forth sons of God daughters of God servants of God ministers of God professionals and we do everything we do in Christ it says holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of christ that i have not run in vain what's paul the apostle saying is saying if there is no transformation in the lives of the people we're preaching to if they have not turned from being sinners to sons and daughters of god if they're not living righteous lives redeemed from all iniquity he said then he will get to heaven he will look around where are the people that minister to and then he will not find anyone he would have run in vain he had entertained the people who are not saved he had prayed for the people they were not converted he had ministered to the people and their lives were still like they were before they were born again and so jesus says i'll say unto them i never knew you depart from me ye that walk in equity and the minister would have run in vain but he said if you hold forth 
in your life if you hold forth by your practice if you hold forth by your behavior if you hold forth by the transforming grace of god in your life then you get to heaven i get to heaven and i'll rejoice because i have not run in vain neither labored in vain we're coming to number two there number two is accessing and ascending serving grace the grace we have at the level of sonship that's one good that the next one accessing that grace accepting that so that can serve graciously in romans chapter 5 verse 1 it says therefore being justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ the peace we have foremost is peace with god he was angry at the sinner he was angry at his sin but now we come through christ and we plead that the lord the father in heaven for the sake of christ who was our substitute as well as our savior that the son will speak to us will speak to god for us he'll plead with god for us and it becomes our substitute and now we say we're justified he has forgiven us he has not nothing against us it's taking guilt away it's taking the condemnation away and therefore being justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ and then in verse 2 it says by whom also we have access by faith into this grace that grace to be saved that grace to serve and that grace to be steady and steadfast in the kingdom of god we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand wherein we stand and then it says and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of god and he tells us in verse 17 verse 17 says for if by one man's offense adam death reigned by one much more much more they that receive the abundance of grace uh, what we receive is not uh, you know want to quench our thirst and then we have a drop of water and it doesn't do much what we receive is not a trickle a drop of grace we receive abundance of grace and then it says and of the gift of righteousness grace brought righteousness into our lives grace does not make us to remain unrighteous to remain ungodly to remain unfaithful no we were ungodly we were unrighteous we were unfaithful and then the grace of god has come now and that grace of god comes with the gift of righteousness that shall reign in life by one jesus christ and then in verse 21 in verse 21 it says that a sin have reigned unto death in the past even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by jesus christ our lord when it becomes our lord it becomes the control of our lives when it becomes our lord it becomes the master of our lives and it becomes the director and the leader of our lives and it directs us and leads us christ never leads anyone to sin to iniquity to evil it comes upon our lives it becomes our lord and because he is our lord now he is in control is in charge and he leads us unto 
righteousness. And in First Timothy chapter 1, reading from verse 15, here Paul is talking about the grace he received. And the reason why he received the grace, he says, this is a faithful saying. And it's worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, to cleanse sinners, to wash sinners, to transform sinners of whom I am chief. He was a great sinner, the chief of sinners, the most dangerous of all sinners. And Christ came into the world to save, to cleanse, to wash, to turn around, to transform sinners and even me the chief of sinners he saved he washed he transformed he changed so that things are not the same anymore look at verses in verse 16 in verse 16 how be it for this cause i received mercy that in me first jesus christ my show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them that should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Paul, by the Spirit of God, says, I receive grace, I receive mercy. Why? To be a pattern to those who will come to receive grace and to receive life like I did. And when I receive the grace of God, my life changed my life turned around and god made me a pattern to the people that will come after so that their lives too will be transformed and changed first corinthians chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 10 in first corinthians chapter 3 verse 10 it says according to the grace of god which is given unto me as a wise master builder he was a master builder by grace it was a servant of God by grace. It was the preacher of the unsearchable truth of God by grace. It says, according to the grace which was given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. And not the builder thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth. Later on, I built the foundation by grace. Any other person that is going to come, he must have the same grace, serving grace. He must have the grace of God to build, not just intellect, not just brain, not just your mind, not just your education, not just your theology. It is the grace. Whatever theology we have, if we don't have grace, we cannot be building. Whatever understanding we have, whatever finance we have, if we don't have the grace of God the grace that Paul the apostle possesses we cannot build like he built let everyone then every man every woman every minister professional let's take heed how he buildeth thereupon in verse 11 for all the foundation can no man lay all the foundation can no man lay Christ, the foundation himself, he laid that foundation, the foundation of the truth for salvation. And the apostles and the prophets that followed, they also built that same foundation. Paul, the apostle, the apostle to the Gentiles, he also built that foundation. Any other person that comes then and is going to build on for all the foundation can no man lay than that is laid already which is Je jesus christ in chapter 15 verse 10 chapter 15 verse 10 but by the grace of god i am what i am was he an apostle by the grace of god was he a prophet by the grace of god was he an evangelist by the grace of god was he a pastor by the was he a teacher of the word of god by the grace of God. It's not a self-made man. 
It's not a self well constituted man that's not the point that's not where the ability and the success came from it came from the grace of god the same grace that's available for you available for me but by the grace of god i am what i am and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain but i labored now grace does not make us lazy idle doing nothing minister why are you not doing something it's not by labor it's not by activity it's by the grace of god grace makes him idle why are you so idle and you are not about doing what you ought to be doing up to this 11th hour i have grace Grace makes him to just stay there, not rise up, not do anything. They're turning the grace of God upside down. When the grace of God comes in our lives, it wakes us up. When the grace of God comes in our lives, it gives us the passion to pursue. When the grace of God comes in our lives, it makes us to see the people that are perishing and we drive at them and drive to them. When the grace of God possesses us, and we possess the grace of God, everything that makes us look warm, lethargic, not doing anything laid back the grace of god brings the fire of heaven to burn that of our lives and it says by the grace of god i am what i am but you know old age is setting on and normally even in the world they retire even in the world they say that's all right you've given enough leave the seed now for the younger generation yes in the world but now we're in the kingdom now we're looking at christ and we're looking at all the apostles that went before us and even as older 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 they were becoming in the world the higher you go the cooler you become in the kingdom of god the higher you go the older you get the more the grace of god will activate you will move you and will push you and you will do what the lord expects anyone having the grace of god to do if an older man has the grace of god that grace will do the same thing if an older woman has the grace of god that grace will do the same thing and it will do the same thing like it did in paul the apostle when he said but by the grace of god i am what i am and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain but i labored more abundantly abundant grace abundant labor i labored more abundantly than they all yet it is not i but the grace of god which was given which was with me we're coming to number three now number three is abounding and advancing through sufficient grace any assignment God gives, He gives sufficient grace. Any errand God sends you, He gives sufficient grace. Any load He wants you to carry, He gives sufficient grace. Any race He wants you to run, He gives sufficient grace. Any assignment, He gives sufficient grace, abounding and advancing through sufficient grace grace you'll have you will possess all the tiredness of yesterday of yesteryears the lord will wipe away this morning in jesus name even me the preacher today i'm going to ask for more grace 
more territory to cover, more people to touch, and more lives to transform. I'm going to have, I'm going to um, ask, of course, I'm going to have. Since if you ask, you are going to have. I'm talking about you now. If you ask, you are going to have. And we will get to places we have never been. We will reach places we have never reached. We will touch lives we have never touched. Because more grace, abounding grace, all sufficient grace is coming upon your life in Jesus' name. In uh, second, uh, in second Corinthians chapter four, we're looking at verse fifteen. For all things are, of, are for your sakes, that the abundant grace. My through the thanksgiving of many redound, rebound to the glory of God. And then in verse 16, it says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. You didn't say amen to that one. Yeah. Though our outward man perish, it's not, it's not saying our outward man is going to be weak. No, it said though, if that happens, yet the grace of God will still move us on. There was, um, you know, this preacher, dynamic, forceful, truthful penetrating but then his body was getting weak and to the point that he could not stand for long but he said I still love the message and I still have the penetrating power of God to penetrate the hearts of people and the first time I saw him on social media Preaching, he sat down comfortably. And from introduction to all the points and to conclusion, he delivered everything. He could have done that standing up. He could have done that sitting down. And because the outward body was getting weaker and weaker, he sat down and still said everything he ought to say. I was surprised. Public speakers, some of them stand. Governors and presidents and kings, when they are talking to the nation, the whole nation, at times they don't have to stand up, they don't have to walk around. They can sit down dignified and delivering their message to the whole nation. We can do that too. If you have to sit down, you might have to explain to your congregation, I have a message from the Lord for you. And I need to deliver that message. And I don't have the physical strength to stand up or to walk up and down like so and so. I'm going to sit down here. And then you are the judge. Is that all right? The majority will say, it's all right. Is that all right? And then you'll preach the message the Lord has given you. You're not allowed. The condition of your body and the condition of your strength to hinder the message from heaven getting to the people. It says, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, perishing, declining, decreasing in strength, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Verse 17, in verse 17, our light affliction, our light affliction. Uh, when you think your affliction is heavy, it will grow heavier. But when you get to Lystra, Iconium, and they stone you, and they leave you for dead, and you're feeling all the aches, if you call it light affliction, it will be light. And when you get to Philippine, and they beat you, and they throw you in jail with silence, 
if you think this is too much and this is heavy it will seem heavier your mind will sink but what you say is our light affliction if you call it light it will be light when you've gone through the shipwreck a number of times and when you are now in the storm and the people and yourself you have not eaten for 14 days but you must get to where you are getting to to preach the eternal word of god to dying soul if you say this is much this is heavy it will be heavy but when you say this is light this is like feather it will not touch your soul it will not touch your spirit it will not touch your inner man when you call it light your affliction is light i said it's light now if i cry and weep like a baby because of affliction people have the right to ask is it this light affliction that breaks you down that cancels your consecration that makes you to say no way i cannot go on again even a baby can endure a light affliction and the grace to endure has come to you to me and to all everything is light affliction if all that Paul the Apostle went through was light affliction, what we're going through is lighter affliction. I was waiting for evening. For light affliction, which is but for a moment, for a moment, walk it for us a far more exceeding an eternal wage of glory and then in verse 18 in verse 18 it says while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal just for a short time but the things which are not seen are eternal and we come to first timothy chapter one reading from verse 12 first timothy chapter one we're looking at verse 12 and i thank christ jesus our lord who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry then he tells us in verse 14 in verse 14 and the grace of our lord jesus was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in christ jesus hebrews chapter 4 reading from verse 14 seeing then that we have not that we are, not that we shall have today at the present time as we are moving on in the calling of our ministry. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast a profession in verse 15 it says for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of a physical infirmities but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin and in verse 16 it says let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need you have that grace to help in the time of your need second peter chapter 3 
verse 17. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 17. Be therefore beloved, seen. Ye therefore, beloved, seen that we know these things before. Beware, lest ye also be led away, led astray with the error of the wicked. Fall to fall from your own steadfastness. In verse 18, but grow in grace. Don't just stay there. Have grace, salvation. Move on now. There's sanctification. There's holiness. There's purity of heart. Purity of life. Through that same grace, move on. There is the grace that enables you to serve the Lord unreservedly. Move on. There is grace that makes you to endure the kind of persecution you have never had in your life. Move on. Grow in grace. Don't just stay at the bottom in the valley and say grace, grace, grace that is greater than all our sins. And some people when they sing that, they say, oh Lord, I'm going to now go into another sin, but have grace that is greater than our sin. And they fall and they weep and they cry. Grace that is greater than our sin. All the days of their lives sinning, doing evil, and they're always, they're not going back to the Bible, they're going back to the song, grace that is greater than all our sins. What are you going to get out of that? When are you going to overcome the sin and be a conqueror and be more than a conqueror because of the grace that's available that teaches you to deny all ungodliness and worldly laws and to live righteously and godly and soberly in this present world? Grow beyond that initial level of your life, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. We're coming to point number two. Number two, we have talked about asking. Ask, seek, knock. Seek. We're seeking now, seeking to recover his great, all strengthening power. We're looking at Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 9. And I say unto you, ask, that's number one, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, this is number two, and ye shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Verse 10, verse 10 says, for everyone that asketh receiveth, number two, and he that seeketh findeth, number three, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. It's telling us we can seek, we can ask, we can knock and the door will be open look at verse 13 in verse 13 it says if ye then been able know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your heavenly father give the holy spirit to them that ask him. The Trinity is involved. The Father in heaven will give, then He will give the Holy Spirit. That is God, the Holy Spirit, and the person talking was Jesus Christ. Jesus speaks. He speaks of the Father and He speaks of the Holy Ghost. That the Father will give. There are three things we're looking at here. Number one, the promise of seeking and finding His power. Number two, the purpose of seeking His fullness with proof. Number three, is the provision for seekers with faith and Purity. Look at number one. Number one, the promise of seeking and finding his power. It tells us in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you as we seek the lord in prayer this morning all these things shall be added unto you material things spiritual things personal thing every need of your life if you seek the lord what you need for ministry what you need for the family what you need for your person what you need for your growth what you need for your calling seek the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you and now we come to jeremiah chapter 29 i read him from verse 11 jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 for i know the thoughts that i think toward you says the lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end to give you an expected end. I'm expecting this, but I don't know whether it will come or not. I know it will come. I'm expecting success, progress, fruitfulness in my ministry, in my calling. But I just desire, I don't know whether it will come or not. I know it will come. It says, it says, mind to you, it's promise to you, it's provision for you, it's plan for you, it's purpose for you, it's to give you an expected end, praise the Lord, the failure of the past is gone. The expectation of future success is come in Jesus' name. Look at verse 12, in verse 12 it says, then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. He will hearken unto you. And then in verse 13, very important verse 13, he shall seek me, seek me, seek me, and find me. God will not hide away from you. He knows you are asking for what only he can do. And he knows that all the sources of the world, all the providers of the world, and all the people that promise in the world, he knows they cannot fulfill everything they are promising, but he, God, knows that with him all things are possible. And because with him all things are possible, that this he says, and he shall seek me and find me when he shall search for me with all your heart and this morning as you seek the face of the lord with all your heart you forget and push aside every other thing and you're seeking the lord what you're seeking the lord for that fulfillment of the promise of god and that overpowering all conquering power of god the Lord will hear you and fill your heart, your soul to overflowing. Look at number two there. Number two now is the purpose of seeking is fullness with proof. The purpose of seeking is fullness with proof. You know, somebody said, I sought the Lord and I said, what did you seek the Lord for? He said, I sought for power to fulfill my ministry. I said, I hear you. Prove it. Prove it. You have the power. Prove it. You have the power. Rise up. You have the power. Move on. You have the power. Go exercise that power. The power to defeat the devil. The power to deliver the this disciples of satan the power to turn around to change and to make people convicted and run towards the lord you have sought for the power you said you have received the power rise up and go and prove it but you know if you still sit down like you always sat down 
and you have still sluggish and lethargic. You're not going to say anything or do anything like you always did. If we, oh, the only part you have is to, you know, come to church. Well, uh, and then you're shaking and shaking and shaking. Now, well, how does that benefit the church? The power you have is when you cannot shout outside, you cannot just scream outside, and you cannot do anything outside. And then when other people are praying and saying, Amen, in an hysterical manner, it, that's the power anybody can do that. You don't need the power of heaven to become hysterical, but the power to go out and say, By the grace of God, He has given me power to deliver and to to tell Israel of their sin and to call them out of that sin and for you to allow to pray that the power of heaven will break the yoke of sin in every life that the power we're seeking that the power we're receiving and we're going to prove it the power to heal the sick we're going to prove it and the power to deliver the oppressed we're going to prove it we're talking about the purpose of seeking the fullness of the power of god with proof it tells us in uh, in uh, Matthew, sorry, John chapter 6, verse 24, when the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took to shipping and they came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. The purpose must be definite. Seeking for Jesus. Look at verse 25. In verse 25 it says, And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, Master, Teacher, when comest thou? Hither, when camest thou hither? In verse 26, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, not because you want to go and tell about the miracles, not because you want to go and convict the sinners who are laid back with the testimony of the miracles, not because you saw the miracles that only the Messiah could do. And you now believe I am the Messiah. Believe me for the very work's sake. Not because you want to believe, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Then he tells us in verse 27, it says, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him as God sealed anointed appointed and he give the confirmation from his ministry we must have the goal we must have the purpose for seeking after that which the lord himself had given psalm 27 i'm reading from verse 8 in psalm 27 reading from verse 8 when thou sayest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Seek my face. The Lord God of heaven wanted to keep on leading the children of Israel. Seek my face. Seek my power. Seek my plan, seek my purpose, and seek my reign over your nation. They came to Samuel. They said, give us a king. Seek the Lord. No, give us a king that may go before us in battle like all the other nations. 
seek my face he went before moses and he conquered every resisting power in egypt seek my face i'm your king I'm your Lord. He went through the wilderness with them and brought out water from the rock that no other person could do. And he brought, he made the bitter water sweet and he gave them manna from heaven. Seek my face. Your sufficiency is in me. He went with them to the land of Canaan, to the promised land, the pleasant land, and they, and they defeated all the powers that came against them. Seek my face. I am more than enough. They said, no, give us a king. And Samuel was so unhappy and sad because of the blindness of the people. And he prayed to the Lord and God said, Samuel, they have not rejected you, they have rejected me. When we seek an alternative, when we seek alternative power, when we seek alternative solution, when we seek earthly power, earthly strength, and we forsake the Lord. We have not forsaken preacher Samuel. We have not forsaken any man. We have rejected God. And the Lord gave them what they wanted. Or seeking for a king. He gave them a king with a small K. With a mutilated K. With a K that will have no power empty K of the king and now Goliath came and as Goliath came and he spoke before the people you have, you have a king not so a diminutive king a diminished king a king you wanted to replace God with okay let him come out let him send anybody my name is Goliath of God let him confront me and so the king with a kind of deformed king of the king he couldn't do anything until a boy that has God that knows God that had sought the power of God and he had not sought alternative power until he came and he said I'm going to get him down oh the king said if I cannot do it, you cannot do it. That's what they say. They say, if they with alternative power could not do it, then we cannot do it. But if it said, I can. What do you say? I said, what do you say? When the men, the women, the ministers, the professionals, any bishop, when they have sought alternative power and now they cannot confront the powers that be. And then you come out, you have not been ordained. You come out, you have not been given a title. You say, I can. And the people that have sought alternative power, they said, you can not. Are you going to sit down, back out, crumble, be crushed? The great people of the land said, I cannot, maybe I cannot. You will. You must. Who will deliver the nation? The king they sought could not. The senior brothers of David, they could not. And all the armies of Israel, they could not. David, you can. You will. You must. Because when thou said, seek my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, O Lord, will I seek. And you will get what you are seeking for. Look at verse 14 there. In verse 14, it says, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, 
and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord, you will find him. We're looking at number three there. Number three there is the provision for seekers with faith and purity. The provision that has made for those who seek him and they seek him with faith and purity. Psalm 63 verse 1. In Psalm 63, Reading from verse 1. O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. Early will I seek thee. Somebody said today is, I, I don't understand. There's a load of things packed for today. A lot of things packed for this day. It's so heavy. Even thinking about what I'm going to do today and where I'm going to today, it, it, it's intimidating because of that. I cannot have my devotional. I cannot read my Bible. It's going to take time. I'm not going to be able to seek the Lord today before I go out. Are you going to carry the load by yourself? You're not going to seek the Lord. You're not going to pray. You're not going to read the Bible. You're not going to get the promises out of the word of God. You cannot do any devotion because there's a lot I'm going to do outside. Martin Luther said, Martin Luther is the one, uh, you know, one of the ones, but the major person that brought the Protestant church unto us and brought the Bible to us and brought the truth unto us. He was very busy. There was quite a load of activities he had to do every day. And he said, when I am the busiest, very busy, that the assignment outside today is so great, I have to increase my prayer time in the morning to three hours. Three hours when the load is going to be heavy and when the challenge is going to be inhuman. I have to spend three hours before I go out. It's saying this when we seek the Lord, we will have the power, we'll have the strength, we'll have the readiness, and what we could have done a whole year, the strength of the Lord can come. We can do it in one day. Oh God, thou art my God early. Will I seek thee? My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. And then in verse 2, it says to see thy power. I'm seeking you to see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, because thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Hosea chapter 10 verse 12. In Hosea chapter 10, reading from verse 12, so to yourselves in righteousness. If you're going to reap, so in righteousness. If it's going to be prospered by the Lord, so in righteousness. If you sow in iniquity, you're all alone by yourself. God is not going to support that. If you sow in sin, you're by yourself. God is not going to support that. If you want to be fruitless, if you want to be rejected, if you want to be driven away from the Lord, you can sow anyhow. And you can sow in unrighteousness, in ungodliness. You can sow with backsliding. But if you want fruit, if you want success, and if you want progress in your calling and ministry, sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. Don't resist, don't reject, don't steven up, and don't harden your mind. Break up your fallow ground. For 
it is time to seek the Lord till he come and reign righteousness upon you. Amen. Amen. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, knocking to regain his great all secured promises. Seeking, asking, seeking and knocking to regain his great all secured promises. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, importunate knocking at the Father's door of promises. Number two, incessant knocking at our friend's door of provision. Three, individual knocking at the final door of all possibilities. All possibilities. This day, this week, this month, next month, this year, the rest of your life in ministry, all things will become possible. And I want you to just write it down. Impossible is possible. Impossible is possible. Our fathers and forefathers were using the ass, the ox, the mule, or you using the animals to move from place to place. You can see the pictures. And they'll carry those harvests of the farm. All they can do is put it on a moving animal. But somebody began to reason. These animals get tired. Can we have something that will not get tired? Once we give it the right foil, sure and impossible became possible somebody thought and somebody had vehicles cars lorries trains that will move beyond the animal were you seen before but then when they got to the shore of the sea they said here we stop the market on the other side of the river we cannot get to. Somebody thought there must be something we can do. And somebody thought we can build a bridge. The people before that time, for them, it was impossible. Look at how deep the ocean is, the sea is. Look at how wide. How can, who is going to dive in and build a bridge? Who are going to use cement? The cement will flow away with the water. How can we do that? Somebody said, impossible is possible. And then there were times that, you know, some people thought over the bridge there, when it rains, the water will even swell up and always swell, almost sweep away the bridge. And somebody thought, can't we go under that water and tunnel, you know, dry road, covered road, secured road under the water? An engineer said there, impossible. Another engineer said, impossible is possible. And he did that. And then some people, two brothers, they were, you know, sitting back there in their house. And they looked at all the surrounding. We are having difficulty to break down that mountain and to tunnel through that river. And they said, can't we have uh, something that will carry men and carry them over the air? Uh, don't be funny. And don't be a kind of a crazy. How can anybody do that? But he said, impossible is possible. 
and he now began to construct that thing it has become an airplane today and the airplane originally was about to move for one hour for two hours but now it, it took a long time for somebody to fly from New York to London non-stop and fly over the sea they're all telling us impossible is possible but you know that's uh, the brain the mind God has given to the people in the world and you can talk about a lot of things that have happened the computer and look at what the computer can do today impossible is possible the social media look at how news fly around now impossible possible it's only the church of the living God that will say as it was so it is and so it will ever be and if you want to try any new thing that will manifest the power of God like in the earlier days beyond the earlier days they said hold on hold on don't be too excited pastor and don't be fanatic preacher because that is impossible I came here to declare to you today that in your life, in your ministry in the church of the last days, impossible is possible through you through me through us together number one importunate knocking importunate knocking at the Father's door of promises. Incessant knocking at the friend's door of provision. An individual knocking at the final door of all possibilities. Let's look at number one briefly. Number one, it's in Luke chapter 18, and I'm reading from verse 1. It says, And speak a parable unto them to this end, that man ought always to pray and not to faint. Always to pray, but if you are going to pray, you must believe impossible, possible. Don't pray except you expect what God said he will do, that he will do it. Look at Moses praying with millions of people, Israelites, having the sea in front and the Egyptian army with their chariots behind. Is any use to pray? Yes. In that impossible situation, are we still going to pray? Yes, we are going to pray. And all the time, the solution was in the Moses' hands, and he didn't know. And God said, Moses, why are you crying unto me? Look at what's in your hand. Stretch that rod. You've got your solution. And I say, your solution is already given to you in your hand. Your problems are solved. And the Lord continued in verse 2. In verse 2, it says, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. Think about that. You have a journey. You have a goal. You have a people. And you have a place you are going to reach. And the only people that can help you and get you there, the only person that can provide the resources to get there, there and to have what you what you want he does not fear God he does not regard man he does not fear God he does not respect man oh you said I wish I had somebody that knows I'm running for God that knows I'm doing this for God and he will fear God and he will respect man and respect me but this judge feared not God, neither regarded man. Look at verse 3. And in verse 3, it says, And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, verse 5, verse 5 says, Yet, because this widow, this lone widow, 
this poor widow, this widow, importunate widow, this widow troubles me. You will trouble your trouble. Did you understand that? Anything, everything that will block your way and say, there is no way here. Jesus is your way. And Jesus has made a way for you. And he says, you cannot pass this way. Don't turn back. It's the people that hold on. And the people with their voice, the widow did not have money, did not have contact, did not have anyone, but he had the determination, I will have what I seek. You will have what you are seeking. And so, because she troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming, continual asking, Continual seeking, continual knocking, she weary me. In verse 6, verse 6 says, And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. Verse 7, In verse 7, Shall not God avenge his own elect? Elect? Who are the elect of God? I said you are the elect of God. Those who are chosen and selected. When you are chosen and selected, you are an elect. And now you say, shall not God avenge? It's only elect which cry day and night unto him. Though he be along with them. Verse 8. In verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. It tells you it will avenge you speedily. It will answer you speedily. It'll give what you are knocking for. It'll give you speedily. This morning is the morning of receiving. We're looking at number two here. Number two is the incessant knocking at a friend's door of provision. Luke chapter 11, we're looking at verse 5. In verse 5, and he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend? Which of you shall have a friend? I have a friend. I have a friend. He came and he died for me. He said he will not want me to face eternal damage, damnation. And he died for me, a friend. Greater love has no man than this, that a man will die for his friends. And I call you friends, not servants, because everything I got from the Father, I reveal to you. I deposit in your life. And every power I've manifested, I come to give that to you. He that believeth on me. And uh, the works I do, he shall do. And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go to the Father. I have a friend. There is nothing impossible for that friend. There is nothing so difficult for Jesus, our friend. And we have a friend and it says, He says unto them, Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. And then it says in verse 6, in verse 6, for a friend of mine, I have a friend. He supplies everything I need. And because of the friend I also have, he looks at me, he says, I will be a friend like my savior friend. My savior friend will give everything, will provide everything. And my friend here on earth, he seeks, he wants healing. 
He's poor, he wants support. He's sorrowful, he wants joy. He has difficulty, he wants solution. He asks me as his friend, and he says, Because I am like my friend on high. His expectation, high expectation, is that I will also supply her need, his need, as my friend from on high, as he supplies my need. And he says, for a friend of mine, in his journey, he's come to me, and I have nothing to search before him. And I have the desire to search something before him to give him something to bless his life and to remove the agonizing need of his life or her life verse 7 and in verse 7 and he from within that the human friend shall answer and say trouble me not the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I cannot know. Actually, he didn't want to, that friend. I don't want to rise up and give thee. Don't say I cannot. Christ has provided. And you have demanded. And he has given you all the power, all the provision, everything your lower friends will need. Don't say, I cannot rise and give him. You might say, I'm so sleepy, I'm so tired, I need my rest. I don't want to wake up, but don't say, I cannot, because you can. I said, I can. I said, I will. I must. What I must do, I must will to do. And what I will to do, I must assure myself, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Look at this in verse 8 now. In verse 8, it says, I say unto you, though he will not rise, not that he cannot rise, not that he cannot rise, no, he will not rise and give him because he is his friend. Yet, because of his importunity, asking and not giving up, seeking and not giving up, knocking and not turning back. He says, because of his importunity, he will arise and give him as many as he needed today. Because you will not give up. You will not turn back. A great friend in heaven, he will arise from the throne and give you everything you need to succeed in ministry and profession in Jesus' name. It's on the basis of that Jesus said in verse 9. In verse 9, I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. This day is the day of the open door open chamber open heaven open storehouse in heaven upon your life upon your ministry no regrets in your life the doors are open today number three number three we're looking at individual knocking at the final door of all possibilities individual knocking there are some people that it's just a habit and the habit if you respond to that habit it is kind of stored in your system it is engraved in your system 
that because you've done this every time, every time, every time, becomes like reflex action. Uh, look at this. There is a field there. And there is this person. The way is there. The path is there. But it will take the field of grass every time. Goes over, goes over, goes over. Number one, any time he wants to come to a particular place, it's already ingrained in him. He'll go over that field again. And he makes a mark. He makes a mark on that field. And everybody can see. You see how that works? When you make an action, first time, second time, third time, every time, it makes a path in your thinking in your mind that you even without thinking now you just go through that and go through that again it's become a beating path that you always go through there are people where i'm going is this they have the habit every time we we'll say now let us pray it just they're not doing evil deliberately they're not doing anything unknown deliberately it has become ingrained in them they will stand up go out while the prayer is going on and they cannot individually ask seek and knock and when the prayer is about to finish then they will sneak in again it has become a habit but you know it's a habit that impoverishes us it's a, a habit that brings us down that when individuals are to come and seek the face of god and have the power of god he's not doing it to hurt anybody anymore it's not doing it to spite anybody it's just that that has made a pass in his own spiritual life that he cannot pray anymore when it is time to pray today we're going to block that kind of path today all that kind of attitude and habit that brings us down that keeps us down that pins us down and we're yielding to a self-destruct a self-destructing habit we're going to cancel it and cancel it forever in Jesus' name. Now, as we come to pray at this time, understand today is different from every other day. Your tears will be wiped away. Impossibilities will become possible in your life. And the things you have found difficult before now the lord will make them easy in your path in jesus name because now for me for me impossibilities will become possible amen mark chapter 9 and i'm reading from verse 22 mark chapter 9 Verse 22, and of times it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Of times that thought, that mind, that action, that behavior, that neighbor, that child has suffered and the evil one wanted to kill him by throwing him into the fire. Myself, I've had so much discouragement, I've had so much downtrodden kind of life. I've had the impossibility syndrome in my life, in my self-talk. I talk to myself. 
impossible impossible you cannot do that you cannot go forward give the opportunity to those who can do it you are down you'll never be up and all times that has cast me into discouragement and i say what can i do if you can do anything lord help me your help has come Look at verse 23. In verse 23, it says, But Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe. Isn't that simple? He didn't say, If you can go to Jordan, if you can go to Jerusalem, if you can climb up to the mountain, if you can hide yourself in the valley, if you can have enough money to buy this, if you can have 100 pair, pair warriors supporting you and helping you. No, he didn't say that. He said, if thou canst believe. You're not believing yourself. You're believing him who can do all things. You're believing the God of heaven who created the whole universe. You're believing the God of all impossibilities. And he says today and tomorrow and next week and next month and next year, if you keep on believing, 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 if thou canst only believe, all things are possible to him, him, one person, him, you, her, you. The Lord will make all things possible in your life, in your family, in your ministry, in your profession, in Jesus' name. If I knew that any project I start, I will finish. What will I start today? If you knew that any journey you take to go and preach the gospel here, there, there, if you knew that all the manpower you need, all the money you need, all the material things you need, all the resources you need, if you knew that you could not fail, that everything will be given, what journey what you take today, if you knew that any sinner you talk to, that that sinner will not say no, and that sinner will say, I've been waiting for somebody like you. Why didn't you come before? If you knew everyone you spoke to, the word of God through you will penetrate into them. What will you do? Who will you speak to today? If you knew that failure is cancelled from you, if you knew that defeat is cancelled from you, if you knew that everything you set your mind on, there is no impossibility, the possibility has come. What will you do today? What will you plan today? If you know that all resources are available and that if thou canst only believe, all things are possible to you because you believe. As we pray now, what will you ask God? You know that all things are not possible with the believer. With the one that believes of the promises of God, what will you ask? How will you pray? You'll forget everyone around you and you'll come to the Lord. You will ask, it will be given to you. You will seek, you will find. And you will knock, knock, knock and the door will be wide open to you. The church needs another deal, Moody. The church needs another John Wesley. The church needs another Spurgeon. The Lord needs another uh, Feeney. The Lord needs another Sunday, another Evangelist Sunday. The Lord needs another man, another woman today that will shake our country. That will move everyone on their knees and, find, and make them find salvation. The Lord needs another Elijah. He's looking around. Praise the Lord. He got you there. He got you there. Everything will be possible for you. Don't look back. Don't think back. Don't look down. Look to the heavens. 
your possibilities will begin today. Rise up now and tell the Lord, ask, see, and knock. Your day of victory, your day of supply, your day of new possibilities, those days have now come. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Don't think of impossibilities. Just whatever you want to ask the Lord. Power, grace, strength to be able to go through, break through, and have success, progress, growth, achievement, conquering, accomplishment, the ministry he has called you to. All grace available. All faith activated. All power provided to you. Moses thought he could not. I am a stammerer. You can. You will. You must. Joshua's hands progress victory was being eroded when Moses hand went down but now Moses is not even available and Joshua was on the field he would have thought Without Moses, I cannot. You can. You will. You must. And when he spoke to the son to stop so he could finish triumphantly the battle before him, Moses was no more there. Don't say you cannot. You can. You will. You must. In Jerusalem, they chose Philip as one of those that will distribute food. They didn't think he could heal the sick, he could preach the gospel, he could bring sinners to Christ. No, they thought he could not. The wind of persecution blew him to Samaria. In Samaria, he preached Christ. Sinners got saved. The sick got healed. The demonized got delivered. And there was joy in the whole city. Back there, when the apostles were with them, Philip, Stephen, and the others thought they could not. But now Philip is in Samaria, and the apostles were not there. And he did what he thought he couldn't have done. You can. You will. You must.
There's grace. All sufficient grace. There's power. All strengthening power. There are promises of all possibilities, all secured promises for you today, tomorrow, henceforth, this year, all the years following. Now, you can from now on you will henceforth you must Don't sing the whole songs anymore. I cannot. Old song. I'm not able. Old song. I could never make it. Old song. I'm afraid. Old song. I feel intimidated. Old song. Others are strong, I am weak, old song. Don't sing them old songs anymore. My enemies are more powerful than I am, old song. They're determined, I am wicked. Old song. Don't sing those old songs anymore. I cannot. I've never been strong. I've never achieved. It's too late. I'm too old. I mean, experience old songs. Don't sing those old songs anymore. New song, I can. New song, I can do all things. New song, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me new song i will arise and go new song i will arise and do new song i am more than a conqueror a new song i am who he says I am. New song. I can do what he says I can do. New song. I am not weak. I am strong. New song, I'm not sick, I am well. New song, I am not poor, I am rich.
believe all things are possible to him that believeth. Believe your faith has made you whole. Believe the faith makes impossible possible in your life. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. I'm a different man now, Lord, I believe. I'm a different woman now, Lord, I believe. Victory has come. Triumph has come. All my petitions answered. Lord, I believe. In Jesus' name we pray. Your prayers have been answered. Your weakness has been taken away. Your impossibilities have been cancelled. Do you believe? Lord, I believe. Say that again. Say that from the depth of your heart. <coughs> it's of that hand. Believe. A believing minister. A believing professional. A believing child, son, daughter of God. There's going to be a difference from your life today. Something was born with power. But he never used the power. But all of a sudden, one day, something began to move on the inside of him. And then he responded to that move. And power became activated. God has given you now sufficient grace. He has given you the strengthening power. He has given you a secured possibility in every area of your life. The Spirit will move you to act, to preach, to pray for the sick, to drive away and cast out demons. When that mind, that thought, that spirit, that newness comes in your life, don't say, I've never done that before. Say, today is the day power will be activated in my life. And impossible now is possible. My brother, I'm looking at you there. Impossible has now become possible. My sister, lady minister, I'm looking at you there. Impossible has now become possible. On your head, a new anointing. A new possibility. New glory and new grace in your life in Jesus' name. Raise up that hand. Father, I bring every Elisha before you. That the anointing, the power, the mantle, 
on Elijah will rest on every Elisha in Jesus name take away the impossibilities of the past the weakness of the past the subservience of the past and lift up every son every daughter lift up every minister every professional lift up every worker every evangelist to the mountain and to the peak of performance and achievement and possibility in jesus name in the day feel them with power in the night saturate them with power on the field let the manifestation of power come through them in jesus name they will walk they will not be weary they will run they will not faint lord activated power energizing powers possibilities powers in the Individual manifestation of power every minister every brother every sister in Jesus name put your failures behind you put the former discouragement behind you and put the former defeat behind you arise go forth preach Pray, cast out devils, heal the sick, and go and do the works of Jesus for the power of Jesus. Lord, for everyone, let there be fulfillment. Everyone, let there be manifestation. Everyone, activation of power in every life in Jesus' name victory not failure Amen. conquering not defeat Amen. up 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 no more down Amen. now my brother now my sister you can Amen. you will Amen. you must Amen. good good things will be reaching concerning you concerning your work concerning your effort Concerning your spiritual progress, new things are reaching concerning you in heaven. They will fulfilled here on earth. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.